<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sexist fucking warning alert. <laughs> Is it though? Like, I mean, it's I all right. Just... None of our viewers want are in cancel culture. We're fine. We're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey to Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, and rant. Hello, and welcome back to the Whiskey Ramp podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. And tonight we are talking about the whiskey for every occasion. We're going to break down a whole bunch of occasions where you would be reaching for a bottle and let's pick a couple and uh, see what we got going on tonight is our 50th episode of the podcast can you believe it you know what it doesn't feel like 50 episodes right it doesn't feel like 50 yeah. episodes but i will say out of all the things i've done on whiskey in the six and youtube and all that other stuff this has been the most fun it has been the most fun they, like, yeah. there, there might be a time where I give up doing whiskey in the six, but I will continue doing the whiskey. The <laughs> I just like that it's just you know us mostly just shooting the shit. The occasional rock star guest comes on. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's like unscripted. Remember when we first started out? I would like bring show notes, and we like we have a breakdown yeah. of like all the things we were talking we about. And seriously. you were like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> I was like, "This is how they do it in the big times, you know? This, this is what's called a rundown. This is the, this is what we're going to talk about." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's good that you're like that because I'm like the most type B personality there could mm. possibly be. So I always need a type A to like kind of just help me. I, I mean, it wasn't that much. It was like a couple <laughs> jot notes, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's start off the list with um, something that we're drinking right now, and that's uh, the fiftieth episode of Cajun whiskey. What are we drinking? This is a special sample from a good friend uh, of the show, Christian. He sent us a Glendronic Grandeur. This is batch number 11, 28 years old, coming in at 48.9%. These guys are like 1,400 uh, retail. So Christian is a big fan of the show. He's like, he saw us, you know, we've talked about Grandeurs. You've owned a couple in the past. Um, Obviously, they're like some of Glendronic's best stuff. They're, They're the most difficult thing to find yeah. right now like yeah. i i never even see them on shelf you don't even hear of them they it's like a whisper they come and go and then gone like i honestly i've never had a shot at one and i can't even remember how long yeah because like remember we were drinking like what batch eight nine ten maybe mm-hmm. or eleven somewhere was, somewhere in that range right? yeah so i think you had tried the nine ten eleven no the eight nine eight nine ten Seven? No, yeah. Like that. <laughs> anyway, no, it was an eight, nine, ten you had yeah. in a lineup at uh, a friend's house. And yes. I only tried the um, nine. I tried the seven and the nine. Yeah. I never got to try the eight and the ten, which I heard were really good. So this one would be... So if you don't know, the, the Glendronic Grandeur, it's a, it's a marriage of, what, like three to five casks? It's very small, right? I think this one might be six casks. Six casks? Okay. Th- did I read that? I mean, I'm, I could be wrong. It's it's usually like low, like low thousands like, of okay. bottles. So like under 10 casts, like a very small amount oh, yeah, of casts, yeah, yeah. right? For yeah, sure. yeah. For much under that. And this one would be like a Rachel Berry exclusive, right? Because she took over as Master Blender there, what, four years ago? Something like that? A while ago. Um, I mean, Billy Walker did start this line though. Right. He started this line and it, it was kind of like... Um, Hannett taking over for Brook Laddie with right. the Black Art. Yeah. It was a very similar situation. Yes. This was their, like, go-to, like, um, you know, big bottle that they released. Yeah, this year. is, like, their their showcase, their centerpiece. Yeah. They're, like, they're, you know, yeah. really nice release each year. Yeah, it comes in that piano box. Do you like, think that, uh, that Billy Walker left little notes, maybe little, like, ticks on the cast? Be like, you know, batch this. This one's good, that one's good. You know, I'm not telling you what to do, but these ones together would be great. I mean, I wonder, like, so the story behind uh, the black art was when Hannett was given a similar recipe, mm, yes. he actually crumpled it up and right. threw it away. Right. So I wonder, it, it would be cool, but you yeah. know, I haven't heard Rachel Berry uh, say that before. I've heard, I've watched some interviews with Rachel Berry. She's one of the best in the biz and like super underrated, I think. Mm. So it's, it's cool to hear her talk. I just took a sip. It's just like everything you want Glendronic to be, you know? It's like that ooey gooey sherry. This is the oldest Glendronic I've had, I think. 28? I think 27 was the oldest up until this point, and it was a single cask. 
You know what's weird about, and I was getting it on the nose too, weird in a good way, it has like a, almost like a saltiness, mm. which I would not expect from Glendronic. I thought you were gonna say like a like a gunpowder smokiness to it almost. Yeah, there's something different about this than like typical that, Glendronic. That for barrel, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. But I am getting a salinity both on the palate and yeah. on the nose. It almost reminds me of like an old Highland Park. Yes. Like a like a dark sherry old Highland Park. Yeah. Which is weird. You wouldn't think that that would make sense. So we're gonna sip this throughout uh, the show tonight. Also, um, very good friend of the show, Casey. He sent us samples uh, that what? we've been sitting on for way too long. Way too. Way long. too long. Way too long. Way too long. Um, so we poured out one of them tonight. They're blind. We don't know what they are, but we did pour out uh, sample number two. So Casey, if you're watching, we're, we're we got sample two poured here. Yeah. And we don't know what it is. Um but we will try that after this. All right, so we've made a list of some special occasions that you would maybe be reaching for a bottle for. Um, so since this is the winter time, mm -hmm. let's start it off with a winter dram. If you're at a winter cottage, winter getaway, winter, getaway, uh, winter a you know, a resort, um, at a cottage with, with uh, friends, what's your winter pour? I think it's gotta be something heavy on the sherry, mm. right? Um, I'm thinking, I, this is gonna, I mean, how do we not get cliche here? This is the problem because the do first the, thing do that a comes cliche. to mind- Do a cliche, they can fight it out in the comments. Right, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, a nice heavily sherried uh, Glen Allocky 10 year old, or, mm. or I mean, my go-to would be the Springbank 15. Okay, so two things that are like heavily sherried give you that nice sherry spice. Yeah. For me, I'm going peat. Okay. Winter to me is peat. Right on. So like, if I'm gonna keep it reasonable priced, I'm probably gonna look for something like an Ardbeg Koi Reckon, my favorite Ardbeg in the core range. Uh, if I'm spending a little bit more money, I'm going Octomore. I'm going like a .3 series, Octomore, really getting it done. That's what winter is to me, it's that heavily peated stuff that I like. Yeah, I can totally dig that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I like sherry in the winter, but I, I like peat. Yeah, I'm probably more of a spring summer peak guy. Okay, let's let's go right to let's stay in this era of season and go to Christmas. Now, Christmas is you is you something different you do at Christmas time than you would do just at a regular winter retreat. Okay, so Christmas, um, this is whiskey for every occasion, but I mm -hmm. do tend to like gravitate towards my cognacs, my armagnacs, my rums at sure. this time of year. Why don't you throw out a whiskey and then a malt alternative if you will? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think, I mean, such a great go-to whiskey at Christmas is the Aaron 18. Yeah. Again, I'm sticking sherry. I'm sticking like with all that, you know, those Christmas cake kind of flavors and, you know, dates and figs and dark fruit and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So yeah, the Aaron 18. Yeah. Or at least the one that we really liked, which was like super dark. Right, so like, this is where we're gonna differ because like you have a big family. So like you pull out a bottle at Christmas, it's getting tapped by a lot of people. Yeah. Me, my family, they're not big scotch drinkers. Like right. sure, they'll try some stuff here and there, but it, this is mostly me drinking. So when, when it's Christmas time for me, I'm pulling out the big guns. I'm yeah. pulling out something huge. Um, Highland Park 30. Highland Park 30. Yeah, I'm going nice. something like super nice because I'm usually just like drinking it when it's nice and quiet mm -hmm. and I can like, you know, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's not like rowdy, rambunctious, it's not crazy, it's late at night, some people have gone to bed already. Yep. And I can just like sit back and think about the whiskey. Yeah. I like that one. New Year's. New Year's. New Year's has to be something that is easy because it's probably a party you want to socialize that kind of thing mm -hmm. um yeah i'd be happy with you know your i would be happy with a blend i'd be happy with the lumbery uh 10 year old to okay. be honest with you something yeah. that like it's different it's cool it's funky it's got some peat to it it's got some sherry to it but i don't have to like think about it too much yeah just kind of go for me, I think I'm going bourbon here. Okay. I think that New Year's is like, it's party mode and I don't have time to like sit back with a nice scotch. I just want like mm. something that's like a delicious bourbon, 
probably like something sweeter, maybe something finished. Okay. Um, you know, like if you want to go maybe on the higher end scale, like a Joseph Magnus, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I would love that. Yep. Um, but yeah, like anything like sweet, finished bourbon, um, not crazy expensive because it's probably going to be forgot about <laughs> in right. the morning. Yeah. So like something like that. I would, uh, would love something like that. Yeah, cool. All right, where are we going now? Let's go... Let's keep it in some family. Let's keep the family thing going. Okay. So let's say... Pregnancy announcement. Pregnancy announcement. Pregnancy announcement. You just right. got told you're having another. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what's what's, okay, the, what's let's, the body you can get drunk the fastest <laughs> on? <laughs> Should we go maybe like firstborn? Because that's more of like that's the biggest celebration. Okay, so I can actually uh, speak to that. So you, I've you speak done from that. experience. Yeah. So my, uh, my firstborn, I bought um, and opened the Glenlivet 25. So I'm thinking something with a little bit more age to it. Okay. At the time, that was a big bottle for me. Now, obviously not so much. Um, that we're talking almost eight years ago now. So I would go, you know, something in the 25 year old range. Okay, now, hold on, let's let's clarify here. Because yeah. I said pregnancy announcement. Announcement. And then there's, we're gonna, the true. next category is gonna be the, the birth, birth. The day okay. of the birth. So the announcement is, yeah, maybe something a little bit more run of the more crowd. high ABV. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just like you know your standard like crowd pleaser, like a Glen Allocky fifteen. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm I'm there with you. I think that the pregnancy announcement is like, you know, it's not as something higher end than like the birth. I think the birth, like for me, I think for like the first child birth. You're going like Family Cast. I'm going like Glenn Farkless Family Cast. Yeah. Let's keep it yeah. family, right? Yep. You got like your parents around, you got your friends around. You bring it a Glenn Farkless Family Cast. You just started a family. It seems fitting to me. Yeah, that's a good one. On the announcement, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that you might have some shock and you need something like a high ABV to like <laughs> just take the edge off before you can like fully, you know, comprehend what just happened. Yeah. Okay. So what is it then? I don't know. Something cash Moon, Moonshine. <laughs> Straight from the still. <laughs> Straight from the still. Uncut. Hazmat, hazmat uh, yeah. Eliza Craig. Talk. Hazmat Eliza Craig, yes. That's a great one. There you go. That's a great one. Maybe the uh, the Koi Hill, Koi Hill stuff from uh, from Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. Right? Give me a 72% ABV. So that would, for me, you kind of nailed it. That would actually be my Thanksgiving bottle mm. or the hair, the old heritage Jack Daniels that I absolutely loved. All right. That one would be probably my Thanksgiving. Okay. Bottle. Let's go think. Yeah. Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving, you're thinking like, okay, you just finished a huge meal. Yeah. You're stuffed. Yep. What pairs well after that, or even maybe during it. And you're going to have sweets and stuff like that. After yeah. you're going to have, you know, your desserts, your, your pumpkin pie, whatever. Mm -hmm. What goes great with that? I think it's gotta be a Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, something. A high ABV bourbon? Yeah. Yeah, I may be reaching for like one of my old bottles of Booker's, you know? Booker's Rye, Booker's, yeah. Ooh, Booker's Rye, yeah. yes. I mean, if I'm going if I'm going crazy, then it's Booker's Rye. But mm -hmm. I'm saying my favorite batches of Booker's and, or a lot of stuff from like 2005, mm -hmm. sorry, 2015, 2016. Those two years for me for Booker's were so, so good. So yeah. maybe I'm reaching back on Thanksgiving, getting uh, some nostalgic. Yeah, I think I'm I'm sticking at Thanksgiving with a bourbon or a rye for sure. Yeah, I think that's that's the key for me. Okay, all right. So you've just uh, got the pregnancy announcement. Now it's time for the bachelor party because you gotta have the shotgun wedding. Um, bachelor party. Okay, so what are you and the boys gonna drink on your bachelor party? This is where you go high ABV because you want to get to the right place yes. quick, right? right? Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you gotta go something cast strength. Something, I, I wouldn't go something peated because you're going to be out, you're going to be at a club, you're going to mm -hmm. be partying. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be like smelling like smoke and, and whatever else. So I think you go cash strength, you can, you can go even uh, barrel proof bourbon, you yeah. know, something barrel proof. You know, I think something, something like uh, Old Forester 1920 is is ideal for this. Yeah. Not too expensive. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna get loaded real quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, and then that's it. Yeah, I, I think I could take this two different ways. I could take it like, you know, bachelor party. Let's say 
if it was something like myself, I would be like, we're gonna do golf in the afternoon, party at night. That mm. seems like a great bachelor party. Yeah. I think for me, golf course to me means like cigars. So maybe I would like, let's go back to Joseph Magnus and let's get the cigar blend going. Right Joseph Magnus cigar blend, it's nice and sweet. Uh, non bourbon drinkers would probably like it. Yeah. It goes right with the cigar. Absolutely. And then at night, probably not, not as expensive because like, Let's just go with like, I don't know, maybe like one of those Knob Creek single barrel yeah. store picks. That's, yeah, that those are delicious. I have really good. And value. I think that non whiskey drinkers would probably still like them as well, and it's high ABV too. Yeah, that's good. All right, bachelor party, let's keep it going with this trend. Uh, let's go rehearsal dinner and then wedding day. Okay, so rehearsal. Rehearsal dinner, dinner so yeah, so. I almost think it's, so wedding day you're opening this before the reception or at the reception? Well, I that's don't know. A, that's important yeah. because you open this at, bottle at the reception, that bottle is crushed. Sure, right? yeah, choose wisely. Um, right, so if you open it pre-reception, so let's say rehearsal dinner is your, I would probably wanna- Let's say rehearsal dinner, so that's like your family and close friends, right? Family, close friends, Wedding I wanna party. open my yeah. nicer bottle. Yeah. There. So I'm looking at something 30 years old. Yes. You know, we've done the Glen Goyne 30, yes. we've done the Highland Park 30, something like that. Yeah, I think this is where you go the high money bottle. Yeah. Right, if like, wedding day yeah maybe you get something nice but i think this is where we can really just like sit and appreciate it right you've had the, you've had the dinner you're chilling yep. now it's time for the most expensive bottle you're gonna you're gonna yeah. spend on your wedding i think for sure i think so too and yeah i think you're right i think like you know spring bank 25 could be thrown out there um you know spring bank 21 something yeah. like that something yeah. that you really can sit down and appreciate yeah 100 percent. and then wedding day what are we going with Wedding day, I think you still want to keep it upper scale, but you don't want to go too crazy. I'm mm -hmm. thinking for some reason, like an old Paul, the old school old Paul, like 21 is really like, mm, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. That was a great bottle, nice celebratory bottle. You're not, you know, you're not breaking the bank on it, but yep. you're still getting an excellent pour. Sure, you pour, you pour the old Paul, only 21 for your guests that might not be in the scotch. They're going to like that. I think so. They're going to love that. I think yeah, so. Yeah, Highland Park, even the Highland Park, Heimberg 18 to 21 to 25 all makes sense there as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, now that your wedding's gone to shit, divorce party. <laughs> divorce party. What are we pouring? Cue the. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, this is a tough one because I mean I I hope to never be in this situation, but obviously <laughs> these get a little dark. They do no, get, they, it's, they it's a good one. Toward darkness. Where are we I going think, for a divorce? Party? I think again, it, this is a you're partying, right? You're not mm -hmm. you're not planning on staying home with the boys and sulking. You're partying, but you might have half your money. You might keep have that, half your money. Keep that in mind. That's a good. Or you brought. might have double your money. Depends on your situation. That's true. This is a tough one. I have yeah. a tough. I, you go first. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think this is on the lines of it's almost the same as like your bachelor party. Your divorce mm. party and your bachelor party are very close, I feel. In like, talking like stereotypically here, of yeah. course. Um, so yeah, I think it's gotta be really high ABV. Again, you're looking at like, let's let's crank it up as high as we can go. Um, but yeah, you're right. If you just lost half your money, you can't be spending a lot. No. You cannot be spending a lot. You shouldn't. Right? Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking probably bourbon here. I think there's probably gonna be another cast strength bourbon. Um, you know, even like a Knob Creek yeah. 120. I'm thinking I'm in I'll Vegas do it. and I'm thinking okay. like I'm going, yeah, cash rank bourbon, yeah. um, big party, that right. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Again, like you're, I mean, if you can get your hands on a BTAC bottle, that'd Ooh, be great. Right. But the likelihood is not. Yeah. So let's go, let's go Weller 107. Okay. Weller, Weller 107. 107. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. You can chug it if you want to. Yeah, exactly. You, you don't feel bad about chugging that. You can that. chug it if you want to. Yeah. I like the that. The one time you're allowed to drink from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's switch it up here. Um, let's go birthday. Birthday's birthday. a good one. Birthday, birthday we probably should have started with birthday because that's the time that a lot of people do have a celebratory pour. Yeah. Birthday. For me, I always tend to save my spring banks for my birthday open you know what i mean i know that's a pain in the butt but like and people roll their eyes whenever they hear the word spring bank now yeah. but it is what it is um 
yeah, it's got to be a Springbank. I think this year I opened, uh, what did I open? I think it was either the 15 or was it? No, it was a Hazelburn 21 mm, I opened up nice. for, Very for nice. my birthday this year. Yeah, yeah. and I wrote down Springbank 21 on the sheet for birthday pour. Um, yeah. yeah, I think birthday is like, this is when you drink your favorite whiskey. It's your day. Yep. You decide what happens yep. um, and you go with your favorite distillery. Springbank makes sense for us because those are our favorite distilleries. Um, a lot of people just buy a bottle and save it for their birthday. A yeah. lot of people like to do like their birth year, right? If you're right. born in like 1985, you want to look for something that was bottled in 1985 or yeah. sorry, distilled in 1985, whatever it may be. Or if you're turning 30, 35, 40, whatever it is, you want to get an age statement that reflects that. Those are all cool things to do. Yeah. The older you are, the more expensive it gets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think those are all cool things to do for your birthday. Absolutely. This is great, by the way. This uh, Grandier. This yes. Is, this is a, cel a celebratory bottle. Absolutely. Right? This is a $1,400 bottle. That's that's a good celebration yeah, bottle right there. The Grandeur, you can put into any of these categories and make it make it work. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah. Um, we just did what? Birthday? Birthday. How about some of the big holidays? How about Canada Day slash the 4th of July? So the big Canada Day uh, celebrations here... And then 4th of July, obviously, is the equivalent in the U.S. What are you picking? I got to pick something for my boys at Two Brewers or, like, Shelter Point. You got to go Canadian, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Going, I'm going Shelter Point, Two Brewers, one of those two. Yeah. Whichever. Probably both mm -hmm. in that day, right? I'll, yeah. I'll probably open one of each, and that's it. And then that'll, those will be my Canada Day bottles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So proud of those guys, what they've done. Literally any whiskey I've tried from either of them, I loved. So... Yeah, it's gotta be and guys. I wrote down Rob's best Shelter Point bottle for Canada Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because <laughs> you have all the good Shelter Point, so I would just drink uh, your best stuff yeah. on that one. And what are you going for 4th of July? 4th of July. For our friends in the uh, south of the 49th. I think I, think I want to go with a really good American whiskey if I yeah, could. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I wanna, uh, I'm gonna stick to the rye side of things. Okay. So I probably go if I could get my hands on like a, a barrel seagrass 16 year old, no, or even like the older, that. like the 20 something year old. Yeah. I'd do that. Okay. Like, yeah, that'd I be like a cool that. bottle. I wrote down uh, Eagle Rare. Okay. Because it's uh, you know the eagle, very American symbol. Yep. Um, if I can get the BTAC 17 Eagle Rare, oh. that would be the pour. But uh, you know what? The nice Eagle Rare 10 year old yeah. on 4th of July, I think, is a really nice pour. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a great one. There's one on this, there's a, an option on this list that I've been really eyeing. Because, like, I'm struggling with it. Okay. It's Go to the, it. What is it? It's the winning the Powerball lottery. Winning the Powerball lottery. Okay. So this is, this is the big one. Because Powerball lotteries, some of them get up to like almost a billion. Yeah. Right? They're yeah. like seven hundred and fifty million dollars or something like that. Let's let's be reasonable here because after tax, you're paying at least half that. Yeah. So let's say you wake up, you won the Powerball the next day in your bank account, three hundred and fifty million dollars. What are you buying? I'm going straight to auction. Yeah. I'm going straight to the whiskey base top five or ten. Yeah. On auction. Yeah. Anything from Samaroli in that top five or ten. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm buying. Yeah. And I was thinking about that too. Obviously, my first inclination is to go to the Sam Rowley Springbank bottling. Yeah. But like, that's only like, you know, 30,000. Is that, yeah? Eh. Eh. You know does what that, I, you know, I don't Does know. that mean that it's not better than everything else though? It, it still could be the best one. Yeah. But 30,000 is just a drop in the bucket when I got this much money. You know what I'm going for? I'm going for that McAllen 1926 Fine and Rare crazy like million dollar bottle yeah. i'm just gonna take it and crack it and drink it yeah no one drinks that no no one drinks it and then of course i'm gonna buy the same really as well but like i think that to make a splash why yeah. not why not spend a million that's a bottle? statement right because right? you got all these like hedge fund investors that are probably worth billions that own those bottles and never open them oh here's a better idea that i just thought of <laughs> why not just go to mccallan and just walk into their warehouse and be like, I'm gonna buy this cask. Give yeah. me your, show me your oldest cask. I'm gonna pay straight cash for it. And then you just have a cask. I feel like they wouldn't do it. Why? Because that's McAllen. Like they just, they wouldn't do that. They, they probably get like billionaires doing that, trying to do that all the time. 
You're right. I, yeah, maybe they're just I think like a, for me personally, if I was gonna do that with the distillery, I would just go to Springbank and beg. Yeah. I'd be like, guys, listen, I know you don't like to do this. I will be forever indebted to you. Plus, I will pay double what that cask is worth. Sure. And I just want your oldest cask in here. I want your oldest sherry cask that you be like. Made. I'll build a children's hospital right beside your distillery. I will we'll build an you. extension to this <laughs> warehouse. Plus, buy you guys another still. <laughs> but how about how about like going to a distillery and like drinking a bottle there? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's say you let's say I buy the Macallan 1926 and I just drink it at Macallan. Yeah. That would that'd be a cool experience, right? That'd be a really cool experience. Right? Like, drink it there. Yeah, I think, yeah. So, I just, the problem, and there are so many McAllen's that I would love to try back, like, from back in the day. Mm -hmm. But I, the the recent reputation of McAllen has soured my feelings towards them so much. Yes. That I, I. It's not be, your first choice. They would not, not be my close. first. Yeah. Well. It would be Springbank. It would be Aaron. It would be like yeah. so many other places before. Actually, I'm I'm preparing a list, and it's gonna probably come out this week, of um, my top six um, buy blind distilleries. Meaning, like any distillery that you would go to, or you, they come out with a bottle. If you can afford it, you're you're buying it. You don't mm -hmm. have to taste it. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. It's a hard. It's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's actually a really hard thing to do. I, I'm actually stuck on like four or five, just because there's so many like releases nowadays. Right? There's so many releases. There's some things that I would buy blind that is just not available to everybody. Like yeah. I, I I literally am not even. Well, spoiler alert. I'm like literally not putting Springbank on the list because right. How many people can't get Springbank? It's too obvious. It's it's the most obvious answer, yeah. right? So it's just not worth it. Yeah. Um, there's one that is relatable to the Powerball, not really, but on your deathbed. What are you drinking on your deathbed? What's what's the go-to pour? This is where I would try to revisit, because like you're on your deathbed, you can't gamble on anything here. True. Right? You know this is where I would try to revisit a bottle that I knew that I absolutely adored mm. and try to bring myself back to that moment. Great right? answer. Great answer. So it would be, you know, if I could afford it, that Gordon McPhail that we had the um, what the 80th the 80th, yeah. yeah yeah right yeah. if I could afford it yeah uh, if I can I'm glad you didn't say Virginia Black <laughs> imagine <laughs> if I said Virginia Black in any of, anything here I give you full permission to give me a, a, like a a competition slap across the face I love it alright um <laughs> Ever. We should have like if a I leather. We should have that. a leather glove just standing by. <laughs> just to, like, <laughs> just to, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's got to be something uh, affordability-wise, something more realistic. I'd probably go with the bottle that's still my favorite to this date, which is the Gordon McPhail uh, Mortlock nineteen eighty mm. something or other. I can't remember. Yeah, exactly. was it eighty two or eighty three? It was 84? a thirty one year old, I think. Right. I think it was eighty. Yes, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that nostalgic, like, let's bring my memory back to a time where I remember trying all these things. I like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, those times, I mean, we've had so many good pours with that Brewer 38. I remember cracking it at my place, trying it here recently with all the boys. I mean, that one, that is just a spectacular whiskey. So maybe that. Maybe that. That was the first That's time, really, that I had, like, a, a centerpiece bottle that really stood out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That was excellent. And we still got to finish that one day. Oh, we still have a, a, we baby, still, we have a baby part left. We still have a... We're going to do a formal review on it. A rant okay. formal review. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's up on this list? How about St. Patrick's Day? What, uh, we gotta go Irish here, yeah? Yeah, I think I'm going Irish here. Um, the problem with Irish right now is, can you think of, like, there's a bunch of stuff from Waterford that I really want to try. Mm -hmm. But can you think of, like, a celebratory Irish bottle? There's a Red Breast, but it's not an Irish Day kind of whiskey. Yeah, you're right. It's not a St. Patty's Day kind of no. whiskey. Yeah. There's a Red Breast 27-year-old that I really want to try. Mm, it's delicious. Yeah. Delicious, but like, um, it's expensive. 
Yeah. So am I opening that up on St. Patty's? Yeah. I think I just go with your standard like yellow spot twelve. It's mm-hmm. a great bang for your buck. Yep. Right. Less than a hundred bucks. Yeah. And good quality whiskey. Mm-hmm. Good age on it. Yep. Right. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. I, yeah. I think that I'm with you. Like. You don't want to just drink this like crazy Irish because like St. Patrick's Day, who knows what else you're drinking that day? Mm. You know, it's like it's a binge day. So who knows if you're going to remember that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, of course, like if you want to pick like a crazy Irish, like if you just, you know, could name anything, you're probably looking at that like red breast cask of dreams, right? That 32 yeah. year old little half oh, bottle. Yeah. Like, I, like that's I, the I Irish whiskey that people, that. everyone wants to try. Of course. I think for me, I would go like probably start the day like red breast 15 and then maybe end the day with like. A Waterford something or other, you know? Yeah. yeah. It would be cool to line up all the spots. Yeah. Like do the green little, spot, little yellow tasting. spot. Yeah. You're right. St. Patrick's Day should be, you should have a flight. Right. You should have an Irish yeah, flight. It makes sense. That makes sense. Right? I'm so you that. do you do the, the green spot, blue spot, gold spot, yellow spot, red spot, and I think that's where it ends. Did you say gold? I said gold. And blue? And blue, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or like, if you want to say like even Waterford, and you want to do like an entire farm, like the one point one, the one point two, the one point three. I don't know how far they're up to now. Yeah, maybe like a point four. You can do like four, grow seasons yeah. of all the same of farm. The same that'd farm. be that'd be a cool little flight to of do. Your favorite farm. Would love that. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be cool. All right, there's a couple more on this list. Um, after St. Patrick's Day, we get to the summer. Summer cottage. There's no summer cottage pour for you. What are you thinking? Yeah, so see, summer is where I like peat even more. Is That's that, the opposite of what I would do. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, we've always kind of felt that way. Um, for me, I'm thinking like, like a Lagavulin 12 or even the, um, you know, the... The Offerman casks from Lagavulin, right. I really like, or some, yeah, I think one of those two. I think there's two different kinds of, like, summer cottage drinking times. Mm-hmm. The one you're thinking of is, like, the night campfire. Campfire. The camp, sitting around campfire at night kind That's of right. pour, right? Yeah, and that, that does lend itself to peat. Yeah. But what about, like, the late afternoon before dinner? Sun's still out, still really hot. See, for uh, me in that, like, I'm going to... I was thinking about the um, Ben Romick Karagold. Mm. That's got some good tropical notes for it. It's light, it's refreshing, fruity, something like that would be a good pour. It's funny you mention that because I, I always liken the flavors you pick up from that Ben Romick to like a two brewers. And I was thinking mm. two brewers right before you said that. Yeah. So yeah, something in that like fruity, yeah. fruit forward, uh, tropical fruit in particular, mm-hmm. uh, that would be really good. Like even like a Klein Leash would work in this. Yeah right in that kind of environment yeah uh yeah something a little fruit forward uh you don't have to go crazy on the nose you're outside anyway yeah right um let's keep the same category going and go tropical resort tropical resorts now we're a little different here man i'm all about pina coladas on my <laughs> right <tropical laughs> of course yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's the mojitos you know what um it's too bad because, again, bringing up my re- relationship with McAllen, when I actually fell in love with McAllen was when I was in Arizona and I was on a resort mm. and it was a beautiful pool, yes. hot tub, uh, piping hot weather. And I went to the liquor store and I bought, I told this story to you before, I bought like six um, two ounce minis of the the 12 sherry, the old school 12 sherry, and they were right. like five bucks each. Yeah. Um, which was a great deal. I think they were on sale. And I fell in love with it. I had one one a night while I was there. And it was the perfect, like, sitting on, like, the patio. Yeah. Hot weather draft. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough, right? Because you're right. Tropical resort, you know, you're not drinking scotch in the middle of the day and when the heat's coming down on you. I mean, I reached to rums and agave spirits. Like I would do tequila, yeah. I would yeah, do mezcal, I would do rum. Yeah. If I had to pick a whiskey, it's tough. You're right, it is really tough. It is. It would, it would have to be something light in profile. Yeah. Like a expert mature Klein Leash, something like that. Yeah. You know, like 
I don't know, maybe like a Balvini 15, like the traditional cask ones mm -hmm. that were just like pure honey and vanilla. Yeah. I don't want anything like heavy sherry. I don't want peat. Maybe something like light like that. Yeah. Yeah, those would be good. Um, oh, we missed one. Your kid's uh, 19th or 21st birthday. So like the, the day they're legal to drink alcohol, what are you sipping with them? Man, so this is tough because like... <laughs> Assuming they've not had good whiskey up until this point, mm -hmm. you want to introduce them to the category with something that's not going to burn their palate. Yeah. Right? Like, you're treating this like you're treating, like, you know, you're helping a new Almost person. Almost like a new to, person get into the whiskey. Exactly. Sure. Uh, but it's your kid, and you, you know your way around this a little bit more, so you're going to lean towards something a little bit more expensive maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't even want to begin to know what an 18 year old is going to go for when my son is 19. Right. Uh, but right now at the moment, I'm thinking like an old Pulteney 18 or like a Bal Blair 18 or something in that. So you're thinking about like something really on like on the nice end. Yes. As a nice introduction. Yeah. I'm thinking the exact opposite. Okay. I'm like, it's your freaking, your legal age. Let's go. I wrote down Lefroy 10 cash strength. I'm like, you want to see what drinking's all about? Here, put this in your mouth and freaking swallow it. Like, yeah. good luck. So like, you're, you're basically saying I want to deter you from liking <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> I don't know what your experience is like on your 19th birthday. Mine was like, let's get this person destroyed as fast as possible. Yeah, that's it. I'm like when your friends take you out. It's different yeah. when you're, you're the parent, I guess. Yeah. But uh, that was my mentality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think there's ever going to be a point where you promote your child to get absolutely absolutely shit faced true, <laughs> you true. Know what I mean? so, but to try something insane like that i think that'd be funny yeah it would be cool would be, <laughs> but yeah i yeah i can see why you would go with that <laughs> this this is great by the way the uh grandeur is amazing thank you christian yeah christian thank you so much for this um let's throw out a couple more notes on the grandeur and we'll mm. give it a score yeah so like I said, this is like super, it's, it's every sherry note that you want, right? It's like those plums, those figs. I get chocolate fudge. Like you said, there's like this little bit of like Selenium. salted caramel. Yeah. Like what is that in there? I don't know. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, maybe because of the age. Like again, this is my first experience with a 28 year old Glendronic, right? Yeah. Um, I do find like the leather notes are here. And mm. like this tastes like it's could be older than 28 years old. So sure. maybe 28 is just the youngest cask used for this batch. Yeah, for sure. Right? Very, very plausible. Um, so, yeah, I get that like salty, uh, sweet sherry, but there's something fresh about it as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell there's age to it. Nice, like, there's like a classic note that I get from scotch that I don't get from anything else. Also, probably because I haven't had anything else in this age range or like, you know, um, but it's this, like, you can just tell it's old whiskey. Yeah. Right. This has that. Yeah. Right. Um, ah, man, that's really good. I get this like, um, kind of like tea note, maybe like an English, like yeah. tea. Uh, and I get like some barrel influence, like some char. It's almost translates to a little bit of a smokiness, not yeah. peat. Yeah, but you get this like kind of like barrel char, yeah. gunpowder kind of smoke. Yeah, I can I can get that. Too. And then everything is like wrapped in this sweetness, this candy sweetness, and mm -hmm. this is so so nice. What are you scoring that? That's a tough one because it's it's our first dram of it, but it's excellent. Forty is that cash strength? Forty eight point nine percent. I would assume so. <clears throat> I don't know for sure, but I would assume yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is a low 90s for me. I thought right away 91. Okay. I was going to say 92. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're right there. I think I think if we had time with this bottle, this would this could easily creep up into like the 93 range. For sure. Right? Cuz yeah. it seems like it's really high quality stuff. Yeah, it is excellent. Really really good. Yeah. Really good. What's your guess on this? So, on the Casey blind sample, at first we were thinking Springbank, but so I when don't I first think that anymore. when I first smelt it, I was like, oh, I mean, that smells like Springbank. But... Oh, do they smell the same? Can I see? It smells like Springbank to me. 
thing. But then, when, yeah, you're right. Like, on the palate, it doesn't really. No, on the palate, it doesn't. And now on the nose, now that it's had time to open up, there's like um like a sweet bacon, like a honey bacon kind of note. Yeah, like kind of like savory, kind of like uh, cured meat. Like something like... It still could be Springbank. It could be Springbank. I know he's got these weird single casks. That's what it is. Like, I think it's like, it could be like an indie bottle. And if it, it could be like, it could be Springbank, but I don't think it is. I think it could be like a Glen Glossa or like um. Or like a, oh, it could be a Klein Leash. Like it has this like soapy kind of taste on the palate that kind of reminds me of a Klein yeah. Leash. Klein Leash has that like that waxy note, you know. Mm -hmm. Would you getting that in here? Maybe a little bit. It's older. It's older than you're like what you're typically I agree. used to. Yeah. So maybe you lose a little bit of that waxiness ish. Like but I've had I've it's had like heavily sherry too. I've had Klein Leashes. That's true. You don't normally get like a heavier. A lot of like. Single barrels, Klein Leash, independent bottlers, they're like they're like a refill sherry. They right. get so many of those between ages of like twenty to twenty five. Yeah. But I don't know. I, it doesn't it doesn't read Klein Leash to me though. I mean it could very well be, but I don't know. It it drinks like it doesn't drink super hot A B V. Like it doesn't drink heavy which could indicate age, right? Are you thinking maybe it's like multiple casks? Like he blended stuff? No, 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 no. There are elements that remind me of Springbank. Like it reminds me a little bit of that that 21 year old Springbank from like a couple years back. It had like rum barrels in it yeah. and port barrels in yeah. it and sherry and ex bourbon. The only reason I'm thinking it's not that, unless it's a, it's a Springbank 21 that we haven't tried yet, is because it has that like kind of soapy note on the palate. Mm hmm. Yeah, really tough one, but I do really like this whiskey. Yeah. Wherever this is. But it is, it is hard to put your finger on it. Like, is it Campbelltown? I don't know. Should we throw a, should we throw a guess in there for, for, you know, just entertainment sake? Sure, go ahead. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Klein Leash. I'm going to say 20 plus. I'm going to say 23 years old, 24 years old. And I'm gonna say independent bottle. And probably like below 50 ABV. It doesn't drink hot at all. Yeah. And it kind of like, there's viscosity, but the finish doesn't seem forever to me. No, it's not forever. It washes out with that like soapy note a little bit. Yeah. What distillery has that soapy note? Klein Leash is the only one I can really think of. There's another one that used to literally wash their, their worm tail. Ralphie told us. Yeah. Who was that? I kind of forget. Was that Klein Leash? Was it? I'm going to say Klein Leash. Okay. I think Klein, could, Klein it Leash. Could be, it could be like a spring bank that like is just like really unique and different that we've never tried before. Like yeah. an independent bottler. But I don't think it yeah. is. Yeah. It's like, it's weird because like when I first smelled it, I'm like, oh, it smells like spring bank. But then yeah. when you try it, it's like, well, it doesn't really drink like spring bank. So I don't know. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I, there's. I have. No, I have no guess. But I think your guess is pretty accurate. I just don't know about the, that waxy note. If I'm getting it. The only other thing I could think of is it. Could it be no? But it doesn't have that like. On the palate, it's not beefy enough to be a Mortlock. No. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. I want to add one more to the list that's not here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Your your child's wedding day, assuming mm. he or she is. A scotch drinker. Okay, like what or, are we oh, getting them as a gift kind of thing, or what are we drinking? What are we with opening them? together? Yeah, to, to share that day and say congratulations. Yeah, great question. Um, I think that maybe you pull something from like the depths of your collection. You know, something that I think. Oh, I'm just trying to think. Like, what I have that I'm like holding back. Yeah. You know, maybe like an Octomore 6.3. Ooh, nice. Right? Like something that like, this was like one of my favorite scotches of all time. Yeah. Kind of I, thing. I think we're on the same wavelength. Like, I probably, I've thought like, you know, the new Ben Romick 40 year old, I've been really wanting to try that. Mm -hmm. The price keeps going up. Yeah. It's getting more and more out of reach. Uh, maybe you would want to do something like that on the wedding day. But I like your idea of going back to something to your stash to your stash yeah and for me it would probably be the 
Springbank 10 local barley from 2020. Yeah. That would, that's just my, like, one of my favorite, like, mm-hmm. bottles that I actually was smart enough to, like, stock up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I've got some things stashed away. I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long I'll keep it for, but I have a, I have one George T. Stag left. Oh, wow. That could be a, that could be an option. Interesting. That could be an option. That is an option. That probably will get sold, though, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably going to get traded or sold at some point in time. Right on. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, let's go back in the collection, you know, there's lots of cool stuff that I've got. It's not like crazy expensive or yeah. like insane. It's, it's, it's not just, now, but it might be. It might be, but yeah. it was just like stuff that I liked that was a good value. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got some old Glendronic 15s from 2015, 2014. Yeah. Yep. Some 18 year old as well. Yeah. You did a really good job of like stashing some stuff that from like four or five years ago that are not going to be easily acquired in the near future yeah yeah and i kept those ones because those are the ones that i would would open and drink still that haven't got too crazy with pricing right like my mccallum stuff i sold because it's like it's not worth it no yeah but those um those i would open and drink yeah right yeah leave us a comment down below um pick a category that we mentioned and give us your uh pick for yeah. that occasion or yeah. do you have an occasion coming up that you're saving a bottle for are you saving something for uh your kid or for your birthday or whatever leave us a comment down below let us know um what you're stashing away and, and what you would choose for these occasions yeah and uh christian and casey thank you so much for the samples thanks guys really much appreciated and uh thanks so much for watching guys have a good one cheers cheers, cheers.